Good morning. Um, we are pleased to have everyone here this morning, and this is a beautiful day. We hope that you will be blessed, and uh, may the Lord be glorified this morning. Call to worship from Psalm chapter 148, verses 1 to 2. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his hosts. Hymn of Preparation, Praise the Lord, ye heavens adore him. It's a real joy to welcome each of you again this morning. And as we come into the Lord's presence, we always like to take this moment where we can be personal and quiet in his presence. If the Holy Spirit reminds us of anything that needs attention in the way of confessing. This is the moment when we can do that in the presence of our God. Let's take these next few moments now to be quiet before the Lord. If your heart is ready, already attuned to worship, let's worship.
The assurance of pardon comes to us this morning from Galatians chapter 3, verse 13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. As it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. The curse here basically refers to the fact that Jesus became our sin offering for which we're very, very grateful. Let's pray together. Our loving Heavenly Father, as we, your people, come into your presence again this morning, we dare come in and only through the precious name of your beloved Son, our wonderful Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, as we bow in your presence this morning, we thank you for all that you have done in obedience to your Father's eternal will, even to the point of being made or carrying our curse of sin in your body so that you could take our sin away we thank you for your amazing grace your infinite love your almighty power. You alone have dealt with our sin problem and with our death problem. We bow in your presence this morning to acknowledge you for who you are and to worship and to thank you and to praise you for all that you have done. Hallelujah. Blessed, hallowed be your holy name. Again, loving Father, we remember our pastor and the pastoral team and everyone, Lord, who is in any way involved in the ministry. We think of all the elders. We commit each one to you and their families. We thank you for each one who is willing to serve in this community at Watanar Church. We pray for the Sunday School as it's now in session. And again, we commit each teacher and each student to you, whatever age. We commit them to you with confidence, knowing that you are among us. We don't need to invite you. You have promised to be among your people. Even if there are only two or three of us, and there are more of us here this morning, and we thank you for this opportunity to come together in this beautiful location, to bow the knee, to bow the heart, in worship and in adoration to you, our living, our almighty, our holy God. Again, we think of those who are unwell at this time, whatever their need may be. We lovingly commit them to you and ask, gracious Lord, that you by your spirit will minister to them 
in their need. We think of those two who have a burden to share your message of reconciliation and salvation with their families and with their communities and among whom they work. I ask, Lord, again this morning that you would bless them and may their word of witness bear much fruit, that your name would be glorified and your kingdom extended. Now let's take a moment to repeat the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's take a moment now just to greet one another. I'm going to use the Tai Wai to greet everybody here this morning. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for coming in reasonably on time so that you can enjoy God's blessing right from the start. There are others that are coming, and we know that God will bless each one of us here this morning. This is the fourth week in which our pray request, prayer requests and praise slot are still vacant. Again, I remind you that there are slips of paper in your bulletin for the purpose of recording our prayer requests and any praise items that we may have. Does anyone have a need this morning for prayer? Anyone have a health problem or any other kind of problem? Okay, thank you. Anyone else? We want to include you in our prayer as we pray together. This is not only a pulpit praying, but this should be a communal time of prayer where we're all praying for one another. Let's take these next few moments to remember one another in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, again, we thank you for this opportunity that we have week by week to remember one another in prayer. And again, we just take this moment to do this. You know the needs that we represent, whether we are willing to admit that we have a need or not, you know that we are a needy people and we all have needs of one kind or another. And so we come to you again this morning and we pray in Jesus' name for each other. And we ask, Lord, that you by your Spirit will touch our hearts, touch our minds, touch our bodies, that we may be fully alive, as you have promised. The enemy comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come that you may have life, life abundant. To that end, Lord, we commit one another to you and pray, not only as we gather here each Sunday morning, but as we live our lives in this great city of Bangkok, week by week, may we be samples of your power, of your abundant life, as we live wherever you have placed us. Thank you for this time together again this morning. We praise you and thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.
The scripture that comes to us this morning is from Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 to 27. Read, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall, because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. Sermon titled The Wise and the Foolish by Adam Paul Smith. I would like to say that I am much better, but I'm taking a precaution. I hope you understand. The wise and the foolish. Does anyone here this morning want to be foolish? I don't think so. We all want to be wise. We all want to be smart. To be wise in English does not necessarily mean to be very smart. It means saying and or doing the right thing at the right time usually learned by experience. Or, it is a good, sensible sense of judgment. Or, it's a sensible application of knowledge, often in a difficult situation. That's why very often more senior people tend to have a little more wisdom than those still in their teenage or even in their early 20s. The Word of God has quite a lot to say about being wise and being foolish in the sight of God. That's the qualification this morning. When Jesus is talking about being wise and being foolish, he's not talking from the point of view of an econo economist or any other ist, but in the sight of God. For example, in Psalm 14 verse 1 we read, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God, and I'm going to live like that. That's a fool. And in Psalm 10, verse 4, God's word reminds us, the wicked, because of his pride, will not seek after God. In all his thoughts, there is no room for God. I hope there's no one here this morning who is so full of pride that they have no room in their heart and in their thoughts for God. But there are many people like this. In Luke chapter 12, verse 14, Jesus tells us the story of a rich man. And God calls him a fool. If we read the story carefully, 
we understand that Jesus is not teaching that to be wealthy is wrong or sinful. That's not the point. The man in the story basically had no interest in God. No interest in his eternal future. All he could think about was accumulating more wealth. He could only think of enjoying himself with more baht or more dollars or more, more money to spend. I will say to myself, you catch it? This is the point. I will say to myself, you have plenty. Take life easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, You fool! This is God speaking. Tonight, yes, tonight, your life will be required of you. Then, who will get all that you have prepared for your little self? Brothers and sisters, we need to live in a real world. And part of the real world is that there is God in control. God Almighty. And you and I can only live in this world by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. We need to understand this. A missionary who was later killed once said, he is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. I think this is a fantastic statement. I'll repeat it. He is no fool, or she is no fool, who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. Here is an important question for all of us this morning. Is God the focus of our heart, of our thoughts, and of our life? In the Bible verses we have just read, the Lord Jesus is concluding his great sermon on the mount. Recorded in Matthew chapter 5, chapter 6, and chapter 7. He taught about people who experienced God's blessing as a result of their attitudes and spirit which please God, known as the Beatitudes or the Beautiful Attitudes. He taught that his true people are spiritual salt and spiritual light to their families, to their friends, and to society. He said that he came to fulfill all that is written about him in the Old Testament, including his suffering, his death, and his wonderful resurrection. He taught very clearly how we should behave in society about hatred and murder about broken relationships, about anger, 
and murder. And Jesus reminds us that if you're really angry with someone in the sight of God, you are virtually a murderer. Anger equates with murder in the eyes of God. Revenge. He taught about loving people. Even those who show themselves to be our enemies. He taught about doing good and about being kind to everyone. He taught about praying to God the Father and about the importance of always, yes, always forgiving others. Jesus taught about the kingdom of heaven and about serving one another about only having one master, God or money. He taught that if we are God's children, we do not need to worry and fret about our everyday needs. But that our first priority should be God in a fatherly child relationship and about seeking and serving his kingdom on earth. He also reminded us that if we judge others, then we ourselves will be judged in the very same way. So, don't judge. He taught us to ask God in prayer, to seek the things of God, and to knock on God's door for whatever we need. He taught us true moral behavior. Jesus emphasized, do not store up your treasure on earth, but store it in heaven, where it is safe. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. He gave us the golden rule for living. Whatever you would like people to do to you, you do that to them. And in Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 to 14, Jesus taught us about the two gates, the two ways, and the two eternal destinations, heaven or hell. Every one of us here this morning have to decide. He then warned us to be careful of false spiritual teachers and teaching. Wolves in sheep's clothing. Jesus also warns us about the importance of knowing him personally. Not knowing about him, but knowing him personally. There are many Christians who know about Jesus, but sadly they do not know him personally, and they do not have a personal relationship with him. Why? Because it's very important to have a personal relationship with Jesus. Then in verses 21 to 27, the Lord Jesus concluded his wonderful teaching. As the Lord Jesus concluded his teaching, what did he say? 
Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But only those who do the will of my Father in heaven. Let me repeat. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, even at Watana Church, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But only those who do the will of my Father in heaven. If you want to know the general will of God, read Matthew chapter 5, chapter 6, and chapter 7. And I suggest, it, I suggest you do that at least once a month. Everything that the Lord Jesus taught, especially as written in these three chapters of Matthew, is God's general will for all people, especially for those who belong to God. Are you learning to do God's will? I suggest that for those who really desire to do God's will, you read these chapters, maybe not only once a month, but once a week, starting today. Today we are still living, praise God, in the age of God's grace. This means that if we believe in the Lord Jesus as our personal Savior, and we repent of all our sin, God will forgive us and give us his gift of eternal life. Then we will experience a personal relationship with God through Jesus and be ready to enter God's eternal kingdom. Jesus reminds us there is a day of judgment coming. Are you ready? What if God were to call you today or tonight like that foolish man that only wanted and lived only to accumulate more wealth? <clears throat> Finally, it is no use calling Jesus Lord, Lord if we are not living according to his teaching. In verses 24 to 27, the Lord Jesus concludes his teaching by comparing two groups of builders, the wise and the foolish. Before going to Bible school, I started learning about architecture in a small architectural firm in England. And one of the basics is to know where your building is going to stand. All of us are building a house and that is our character. Every decision we make is affecting the quality of our house, our character. There are two important decisions for any building, for any character. What base is that building standing on, solid or soft? And Jesus told us in the reading that we read together, 
Secondly, what materials did I use or am I using in building my house, in building my character? Jesus is saying to all of us here this morning, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man or a wise woman who built his house on the firm rock. Don't worry about the storms, they will come. Is your house, are you building your life and character on the teaching of Jesus? Whenever the storms come, your house will stand. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The storm came, the house fell, finished. Are you wise or are you foolish? in the eyes of God. We're only safe in the Lord Jesus. If anyone desires to start to build their house according to the teaching of Jesus this morning, you realize you've not been doing it. Join me in a word of prayer. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we are accountable to you, whether we like the idea or not. Our lives are in your hands, and you have told us this morning that there are those who are wise and that there are those who are foolish. I pray, Lord, again this morning that every one of us here gathered in your presence will be those who are wise, not in our own thinking and opinion, but in your sight and in your opinion. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Offertory, there is one who scatters yet increases more, and there is one who withholds more than is right, but it leads to poverty. <clears throat> the generous soul will be made rich, and he who waters will also be watered himself. From Proverbs chapter 11, verses 24 to 25, this is offering time, and uh, we will also sing a hymn. What a friend we have in Jesus. We will sing while sitting down.
I'm going to have to hold this microphone. The little gadget that fixes it to my uh, tie is not here. Hope you're understanding. Let's just take a moment of prayer as we prepare our hearts for communion. Lord Jesus, we bow before you, recognizing the somber and sacredness of this moment as we come to now commemorate your broken body and your outpoured blood. In Jesus' name, amen. And Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave to his disciples, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Jesus took bread and broke it and gave to his disciples. Let's all partake together. Likewise, also the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. Jesus took the cup filled with representation of his outpoured life and blood.
Now let's all stand as we commemorate the outpoured blood of Jesus and partake together. Now let's all sing together the doxology. <clears throat> Praise God. pray together. Our loving Heavenly Father, again we thank you for this opportunity to come together in your house to worship you and to expose our hearts to your word. May we be those who are not only hearers of your word, but doers. Those who put your word into practice <clears throat> because we want to belong to you. We want to live with you forever in your eternal kingdom. Now may the peace and the blessing of God the Father, the grace of God the Son, the fellowship of God the Holy Spirit be our portion today and every day. In Jesus' name, amen. seated. Just wonderful to have all of you here again this morning, whether you're here for the first time or you're here for the 50th time. The Lord bless you. As you go into this week, I trust that the Word of God will echo in your heart. Am I wise or am I being foolish? as for you to decide in the light of God's word. I trust and I pray that every one of us this week will be wise, following and applying what Jesus has taught us to our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat>